The impacts of climate change are not felt equally around the world. For the net zero transition to be equitable, leaders must ensure that adaptation and climate resilience go hand in hand with inclusion. What would it take to ensure the pathway to net zero supports people around the world equally? We're here with Mega Lakrishnan to talk about ensuring inclusiveness in the net zero transition and climate adaptation. Mega leads the McKinsey Global Institute's research on topics related to sustainable and inclusive growth. Mega, if there is one takeaway that CEOs and business leaders should know about inclusiveness in the net zero transition, what would it be? So if there's one thing that is critical for CEOs and other leaders to take away about inclusiveness in the context of the net zero transition it is that inclusiveness is important not just in and of itself but inclusiveness is actually critical to the very success of the transition if the net zero transition is to succeed it must address not just one objective which is reducing emissions but it must do so affordably it must do so while ensuring reliability and security of access to energy and other inputs and it must do so in a way that drives the competitiveness of of countries and companies across the world so megla what is at stake in this transition if if the transition is poorly executed if we don't take into account other important objectives beyond emissions reduction objectives of driving affordability objectives of ensuring reliability and security of energy access and other inputs and competitiveness if we don't keep these other objectives in mind there is a very real risk that the transition itself and the momentum towards the transition gets derailed um for example if we take affordability if a poorly executed transition results in increase in energy prices increase in the cost of materials there is a very real risk that consumers will be less likely to adopt the products that we need towards net zero there will be a very real risk that citizens lose support for the transition and so it's important as we undertake the transition that we keep these other objectives in mind so that we continue to drive momentum to the transition now that's the downside the upside is if we do keep these objectives in in mind if we do focus on affordability reliability and competitiveness we can actually boost momentum to, towards the transition consumers will be more likely to buy products if they see them as being cost competitive and having equal or better performance relative to traditional alternatives and so by keeping these other objectives that are so core to inclusion objectives of affordability reliability competitiveness in mind while we undertake the transition while we plan towards this next massive phase of scale up on the transition we can actually increase momentum retain momentum but also grow momentum towards the transition so my next question to you is where does the world stand on addressing the adaptation challenge so far what do you see as the big step that this cop 28 might achieve in addressing that challenge the good news is I think there's now growing realization that the choice is not between mitigation or decarbonization on the one hand and adaptation on the other hand but it's actually crucially important to think about these together this needs to be an agenda of mitigation and adaptation and not a choice or a trade off between the two now why do i say that the first reason is that regardless of any action the world takes on emissions reduction some amount of warming in the future is locked in already because of past emissions and so we need to think about adaptation to manage risks that may arise as the world warms to 1 and 1/2 degrees celsius the second reason why adaptation is so important is that if we think about our current trajectory of emissions what we expect by 2050 based on the current trajectory of emissions is a world that has warmed to about 2 degrees celsius by 2050 So it's important in this next next decade as we're making these long-term decisions that we not just plan for adaptation for the risks that are guaranteed in the next decade but we also put in place measures to plan for longer-term risks that may arise. Mekala, what about inclusiveness? Where does the world stand on addressing ensuring an inclusive net zero transition and what do you see as the big step that this COP28 might achieve? It's important to recognize that the world has made enormous strides on the path to net zero. We have real meaningful momentum here in a variety of ways. 
We've seen countries and companies make commitments towards net zero. We've seen climate policy enacted in different parts of the world. We've seen massive amounts of innovation, many exciting new net zero technologies, low emissions technologies that are viable and commercial today. So lots of things to celebrate. I think now also a growing realization that the transition needs to be more than just about emissions reduction, but also put inclusion at the heart of the transition. And that's what I hope really gets catalyzed at this, this COP. It is recognizing that the net zero agenda is not just one of emissions reduction, but it is one that goes hand in hand with ensuring affordability, ensuring reliability, and ensuring competitiveness. If we're able to get that mix right, that mix of emissions reduction, affordability, reliability, and competitiveness, I think that can dramatically increase momentum and the pace and scale of the transition. Mika, what is your personal connection to this topic? So I feel like I have a deep personal connection to this topic. Um, I come originally from India. Um, India is a country that actually has both the challenge of rising climate risks. Um, it is one of the countries of, of, in the world that is expected to see rising heat and humidity levels that could affect um, worker productivity. And so this intersection of how to think about adaptation, mitigation, development, all of which I think about under the umbrella of an inclusive transition is one that's near and dear to my heart. Mekla, thanks so much for talking with me today. To learn more about an inclusive net zero transition and what's on the agenda at COP28, register for McKinsey's series of live virtual events at mckinsey.com slash COP28.